Well, Mark, of course, the contest of most importance to national politics, indeed even international politics, is for the Scottish Parliament. The SNP dearly wants a majority on their own in Holyrood. Last time they came close. Back in 2016, they won 63 seats, but they unexpectedly lost the majority that they'd won in 2011. The magic number that they're looking for is 65 seats. The road to that for the SNP is largely through the constituencies where they already uh, dominate. They make up 73 of Holyrood's 129 seats. So in their sights, a few of the remaining Labour-held constituencies, like SNP target number one, Dumbarton, 0.1% swing re required, or Edinburgh Southern, Southern down there, target number five, 1.5%, or East Lothian, target number six. Or they need to mine the slew of Tory seats which slipped out of reach in 2016. Then it was a very strong performance, Tory performance, which kept the SNP at bay. So seats like Edinburgh Central, Ruth Davidson's seat, she's not standing this time, Tory majority of 610. Aberdeenshire West, Tory majority of 900. Or Dumfrieshire down in the borders. And at the same time, they must defend seats that the SNP already have, which they narrowly held. And there's a whole clutch of those. And keep your eye too, by the way, on the Green performance. Now, if the SNP do fall short of 65, then they will, attention will then turn to the Greens. They're pro-independence. If they gain on the proportional regional list seats and take them over the uh, 60 over 65, then the SNP will say that even without a majority on their own, the Parliament's will is clear and that there needs to be another referendum on independence. Now, in Wales, Labour has been in office even longer than the SNP in Scotland for over 20 years since the Parliament was created back in 1999. This was the 2016 result. As you can see, Labour very close to the effective overall majority required of 30. Labour's dominance again in Wales is through the constituencies, but some of those constituencies, the Tories won in the general election in 2019 because the boundaries are the same for the two parliaments, Westminster and the Senate. So, seats like the Vale of Clwyd, up in northeast Wales there, uh, that's, uh, they need a swing on the Senate of 1.6%. If the Tories are having a really, really good night, then they take Delin, which is just next door. Again, the Tories want 7.7% swing required there. Fantastic night for the Tories, then their attention will turn down to southeast Wales in Bridge End. Same thing, 10.5% swing needed for needed there. And Plaid, there are also a clutch of hopes against Labour in seats like Glenekley or Blaenau Gwent. And the Tories have been actually been on a great run in Wales. UKIP were very popular here. You can see just at the edge of the graph there, did very well here in 2016. They appear now, the Tories, who have, absor have absorbed quite a lot of that support and now edging very close indeed to Labour in the constituency polling in Wales. And then we turn to England. So much fun this. We turn to England. Let's focus on the mayoral contest first, held across the country. Some key ones. Well, first of all, what should be on paper, on paper should be two nail biters. For example, the West Midlands uh, contest, Tees Valley as well. Both of these, West Midlands here you can see, after second preferences, reallocated by tiny margins. To conservative candidates won. Andy Street in the West Midlands and Ben Houchin in the Tees Valley. On paper, these should be very winnable for Labour, and yet hopes aren't high at all. And if Labour can't at least win in the West Midlands, then there will be a lot of disappointment in the party. And then there are the council seats. There are about 5,000 council seats up for grabs. Here are just a tantalising few of them. For example, Northumberland. Fascinating one, this, because it's got a little bit of everything. Tories gained 12 seats here last time the council was up in 2017, mainly because you can see the remnants of them there, the Lib collapse locally of the Lib Dems. One of the big questions in these campaigns, can the Lib Dems make any kind of sustained comeback, not just in Northumberland, but elsewhere, in places like Solihull, in Cornwall, in Woking. We'll be looking in those sorts of places for signs of Lib Dem vivification as well. Tories in Northumberland hoping for gains against Labour as well. Remember, seats like the Blythe Valley, they won in the general election. Then we have somewhere like Bury. This time, Labour held in Greater Manchester, a Labour majority of five, but you can see it's nip and tuck with the Tories uh, here, really. Of course, Bury home of the most marginal seat, parliamentary seat in the, in the country now, Bury North. Labour really ought to be expanding their majority here, certainly not conceding ground if they have any hope of gaining ground for the next general election. And then there are places like Worthing. Here in Worthing, offering a tantalising glimpse of a different sort of electoral map for the Labour Party. Down in Sussex, it didn't have a Labour councillor until a few years ago, but you've had a lot more younger people move in from places like London, Brighton. Suddenly the politics is a lot more interesting. It's this sort of seat, Worthing, in Westminster, that Labour needs to win if they're losing ground in Westminster, in the Midlands and the North. Conservatives currently have a majority here of nine. But of course, before all of these council results, there is the big one in the early hours of this morning. Not a council, but a parliamentary by-election for Hartlepool. Here was the result 
Back in 2019, you can see Labour there, 37.7%. Conservatives, 28.9%. Brexit Party, 25.9%. Uh, Everyone's got their eye on that Brexit Party vote. Where does it go? As you can see, it's easy enough on its own, or even a bit of it, to take the Conservatives over the line. And remember, as Nick was saying, governments almost never win by elections. It's only happened twice since 1982. And if the Tories make Hartlepool a third, it will be a devastating win for Keir Starmer, given that he was elected to help the Labour Party stop the bleeding in the North and Midlands. And if Hartlepool goes, it will send shivers down the spine of a clutch of Labour MPs from Leave constituencies in the Midlands and North, seats like Barnsley, Barnsley Central, Barnsley East, Doncaster North, Easington, all with small majorities and big Brexit Party votes in 2019. Taken together with local authority election results, all of this will be significant because it might imply that even without Jeremy Corbyn, even without Brexit, the Tories are continuing their advance in Labour territory that 2019 was not a one-off.